guys, okay, we're back from vacation and here's my suitcase. Everything that I bought in Japan. Actually, not true, there's another suitcase. We had to buy an extra one because I got too much stuff. Kim is here. Hi. How are you? Better today than yesterday, but still not 100% yet. Jet lag hit us both really bad this time. Yeah, I usually get sick on airplanes. I don't know why. She's here in, in spirit, but also physically. She didn't die. <laughs> She's... She's right there. Starting with... Ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba. These were too big to fit in this suitcase. We got these at the Universal Nintendo World Land Super Place. Something like that. This is actually a popcorn tub. There's still remnants of caramel popcorn inside. This is just the coolest popcorn tub I've ever seen. And it was definitely worth buying at 9 a.m. as we walked in and then having to lug around for the next seven hours while we were at the park. Absolutely no regrets. We went on the Mario Kart ride, having to walk through Bowser's castle and then getting to ride a Mario Kart and play a AR real life Mario Kart game. And Kim and I couldn't think of a better way to commemorate the moment than to buy a trophy. You had to get a hundred coins and we both got a hundred coins. So we are champions and it's filled with gold coins. I have been so excited to talk about these on my trip to Japan. You guys know I've fallen in love with Vich's XR glasses recently. I play almost every night in bed on a hundred inch screen like I'm in a movie theater, but I hadn't taken them traveling yet until now I brought these to Japan and you better believe this was me on the bullet train to Kyoto It was so cool I actually made so much progress in Sea of Stars. <laughs> and because of how cool this dock is for the Switch, it kept my Switch charged the whole time. And there's two ports for glasses. So if Kim wanted to watch me play Sea of Stars, she could have. She had no interest though. <laughs> it was just me in my own personal little movie theater. These things are revolutionary, my guy. I'm in the future. This is their new HDMI adapter. They actually designed this to work with iPhone. So now you can plug your iPhone into this. A happy little side effect of it though, is that it will work with any of your game consoles too. That's so cool. The best part about all of this is Vitcha is now launching on Amazon, which means you only have to wait two days to get a pair of glasses if you want to buy them. There's no more long waits and you get a 30 day free return if you change your mind. The screen quality and sound quality are incredible, which has made my trip so much more enjoyable. These could be an awesome Christmas gift, actually. Look at this. If I just touch this button, it dims the glasses. How crazy is that? So if it's too bright or you just want to darken everything around the screen, you can. I don't know where these things have been all my life. And if you want to grab a pair and take them to Japan or whatever you want to do, there'll be links down below. And if you use the code, you'll get 10% off. Literally no risk in trying a pair, and I know you're gonna love them. <laughs> I wanted to play Batten Kados 1 and 2 on the plane and Dredge. Dredge is a new game that just came out and it's apparently really fun. And Batten Kados, the HD remasters. I did do a bunch of vlogs in Japan and you can watch all of those, they're all uploaded already. And we talked about this, but when you get to Nintendo World, you buy a wristband and these are actually NFC readers just like Amiibos. They can interact with several things in the park. Here's a weird dock that I found. You slide your dock on and then you can dock your switch horizontally, which I guess is a great space saver. I thought of Sakurai when I saw this because Sakurai keeps his switch dock like this, but just without anything. These are all 70 cents each. Mario Party 1, 3, and Mario Kart 64. How did I get that heckin' lucky? Well, if you saw the vlog, you already know. All right, that's all the bonus stuff from the suitcase. <laughs> Crack into the good stuff. <laughs> like pants. Yeah. Let's start with this big guy. The first Nintendo store we went to, there's four giant models in different corners and each of the giant figures have smaller figures that you can buy. It's a Link figure that I'd never seen before. The packaging is interesting. Yeah, I kind of like it. I accidentally fell down a hole of retro collecting GameCube games. I'll say that I do love the way that GameCube games look in Japan. These little boxes with the slip covers are so cute. First, I found the Smash Brothers one for 
were like $4. And that kickstarted the whole thing. And every store I went to, I found such great prices on these. Here's Mario Sunshine for 1,100 yen, which is about seven bucks. How do I say no to that? I also had just bought the HD collection of Baton Kados and I found the original here on GameCube 2. Crystal Chronicles, 400 yen. That's about two and a half dollars. I guess I'm collecting these now. Pikmin 2 for 1,800 yen. I didn't know that these games were called Rune in Japan. They're Lost Kingdoms 1 and 2. My physical copies of those games that I have right now are the only GameCube games that were mine that I managed to keep from when I was a kid. Biohazard for 600 yen. A whole box KU Pikachu on the N64. It's all in here. I didn't know it came with a microphone. Yeah, you have to talk to him. Even like this little attachment thing is in here. Here's a few junk PlayStation 1 games that I would love to test. Final Fantasy 9, my favorite Final Fantasy. Fantasy. Valkyrie Profile. I've never played this, but I know it's expensive here. And then Dragon Quest VII. All of these were 70 cents. Even if they're broken, I'm not gonna play them anyway. They're in Japanese. Okay, I'm learning. I'm not that good at it yet. I'd never heard of these, but these Game Boy Advance Famicom Mini Legend of Zelda 1 and 2 games. I don't know what else to say other than they look really nice. They were each about 20 bucks. So add them into my Zelda collection. That was a no brainer. And I found Wind Waker too. This was a little more expensive. I say that. It's Wind Waker on GameCube and it was like $16. I guess not expensive really. Some boxed N64 game. Oh wait, wedged in between here. So when we stayed at the Japanese it was all Japanese. When we say at the Nintendo hotel, they had these postcards on the table in the room and they're made to look like the old Nintendo playing cards, but they're postcards. Okay, so then we have the 64 games. This one, like $12. This one, $20. Had to buy it. Okay, let's actually look at some Switch stuff. They needed to be games I couldn't get anywhere else. They had to be games that didn't have English releases, games that didn't come out in America. So for the most part, I think I did that. Last time I went, I bought a and a couple of them turned out they did have English releases, but like I didn't know at the time. So it might happen here too. And I also tried to steer towards games that had an English option. I don't know why I bought this first one. I probably wanted it. Kind of like a micro mini game style game. Here's Yokai Watch 4 Plus Plus, which is the most recent version of Yokai Watch 4. I'm learning Japanese and I want to start playing games in Japanese. A lot of people say play Pokemon in Japanese because you already know the game, you're familiar with it, and it's a good way of learning. But I was like, I don't really want to play Pokemon again. I want to play something new. And Yokai is kind of like Pokemon. Bob was like, that idea actually sounds cool in a Bob voice. No, oh, that actually sounds pretty cool. Is that Bob? I don't know. But he didn't want to pay this much. And I was like, well, the base version of the game is like $15. And he said, well, if you find that, buy it for me. And I did. A Space for the Unbound, a narrative-driven adventure game. I love the pixel art style. It reminds me a little bit of Eastwood a little. So I was like, I'll give that a shot. Platoon's Party. I bought this because Kim thought it looked cute. And it looks like something that you probably wouldn't even need to know English to play. Going around Akihabara and buying all these games is so cool. Uh, turns out that those are the more expensive places in Tokyo to buy, which it should be obvious. Turns out when you go to somewhere kind of off the beaten track, you can find games for $3 rather than this was about $35. They're cheaper than America for sure. But I do think that Thousand Year Door would be a little bit more expensive anyway. Couple more, EQM Complete Edition. Looked a little quirky and I'd never seen it before. I got this purely because it's a Japan physical exclusive. It is Fit Boxing, but they released a JoJo expansion where those those characters are in fit boxing. Okay, I thought it was Jojo. I said that in the first vlog episode and then the comments told me to shreds. It's Fist of the North Star. I don't know what that is. Apparently quite popular in Japan. There are these Pokemon arcade machines. You have like a whole stack of these tiles you collect, I guess. And then you place them on the arcade machine and you battle with your Pokemon. Not really sure how it works because we didn't get to play it, but we saw these machines everywhere we went. And Kim was like, I'm just gonna go through all these and try and find an Arcanine. Yeah, I just thought it was cool. I didn't think you were gonna find it. It was in the last bin. So in a bunch of different stores we went to, I saw this metallic Dragon Quest collection. These are actually metal super heavy. I ended up just buying a melted slime because it looked like the coolest one. All right, couple more Switch games. This Hunt Down one looks like a side-scrolling beat-em-up metal slug kind of game. And Serial Cleaners looks like a top-down neo-noir kind of, I don't even really know. The very last thing in here are these little pieces of NES and Famicom controllers that were in the Nintendo Tokyo store. They were $6 each and it was a gotcha. They're so fun to fiddle with. They fit 
feel like a piece of a controller and just touching and fiddling with the buttons is kind of cool. All right, not too much left because most of these are big boxes. Super Smash Brothers N64 game. This one was 5,000 yen, so about $35, but the condition is insane. I was debating buying these for the whole trip. They were like $30 everywhere we went. And then we went to a book off and we found both of them next to each other for under 20 bucks each. I'm not in love with them, but I wanted to buy something Hana Hana while I was in Japan, so I grabbed these. I debated on buying these and ended up pulling the trigger because the new Joy-Cons from Hori. Japan got a bunch of different color schemes as well as designs. I don't know if this will eventually release here, but I wanted to grab it either way. 1300 yen for Yoshi Story on N64. Last stack of Switch games from Japan. Melon Journey. This was a game that we saw at PAX and it actually just looked cool. Maglum Lord. I gotta be honest, I don't think I'm gonna like it, but it was so cheap and the box art was pretty cool. For $30, Kim made me buy this as a meme. It's Aviary Attorney. I feel like it might be similar to like the Phoenix Wright games. It's most likely a visual novel. Dragon Quest 10, because how could I not? No place for bravery. The game looks really cool. It looks like a hack and slash of some kind. The Tower of Children. It looks like an RPG that uses cards as attacking. This also just looked like a cute RPG. It's called Giraffe and Annika. Farming elements to it. Also looks like RPG fighting. Kim and I have two videos on my channel playing YouTuber Life. I didn't know I had a physical and this was also in the youth section at Edon. This looks like a little spooky game and it is October, so I grabbed it. The visuals look very different to everything else that I grabbed. I'm not sure what kind of game it is. It might be a detective game. It might be a horror game. Kim wanted to buy Snow Bros Nick and Tom Special, and this looks like those old games, but on the Switch. And then this game, I only knew about it because Play Asia was promoting it. I have no idea what kind of game it is. I'm hoping it has English. Final two things. We have a Mario Kart 64 in box, almost 4,000 yen. So this was about $20 probably. It's not the controller that it was supposed to come with, but either way to get a N64 controller and the game boxed inside for 20 bucks. It's ridiculous. Last time I really wanted the Dragon Quest Switch. This time I was like, there is probably a really cool Switch that released in Japan that I've never even heard of or seen before. So I think I'm just hoping to be wowed and surprised by something at some point on this trip. There are websites like Console Variants that list all the variant Switches that have ever released and they have Switches on there that are just an extra box, like the Kirby box. I didn't know what to think when I saw this. Happy Holidays, Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. I saw this on the shelf and I Googled it immediately. The only thing I could find was one guy selling one on eBay for $600. This was 45,000 yen, which breaks down to about 300 bucks. So even just buying an OLED Switch for $300 isn't a bad deal. But with only one listing on eBay being double this price, I knew I couldn't risk not getting it. This is it though, as far as what makes it special. It's a box cover. The inside is a regular Japanese OLED switch. After a lot of searching once I got home, I found one tweet. I guess Japanese Amazon is selling Happy Holiday Nintendo Switches now. So all I can assume is Japanese Amazon released a Happy Holidays Pokemon Switch that was just addressing a wrap of this really cool, unique box with designs on the inside. I feel like I'm having to justify it a little bit because it does seem like I didn't buy anything limited edition. But I do honestly feel like this is a really cool collector's item. I mean, look, it's Pokemon. Yeah, I really like the box. We could open all these gutches really quickly. So let's see what we got. They had all the DeLoreans. He's just a cheeky looking little guy. What's his name again? Ma, Ma Pico? I don't know how to say it. He's eating a little berry. So there was a Kirby gotcha machine and I really wanted the traffic cone Kirby. But yeah, I didn't manage to get my traffic cone. Rockman, as it's called in Japan. I think you got him first try as well. There was a separate Back to the Future gotcha. I got the Flux Capacitor, which looks really cool. I don't know why it's so fun to just get a Panini Press, but it is. They had this awesome set of full Pokemon. So we got this whole set. I wasn't going for this guy, but I'm kind of glad I got it. He's just so delightfully goofy. All right, here's a beheaded taper. His little Joey is wearing goggles so he doesn't get the onion juice in his eye. Without the onions, he looks threatening. I'll stab you, mate. That is everything that I got. If you want to see what Kim got, that'll be on her channel. Thank you for watching this and entertaining my Japan travels. Like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.